gotta be enemies Maybe we just get brave Take a big leap of faith Call a truce so me and you Can find a better way Let's take some time, open our eyes Look and listen Good evening. Happy Reformation to you all as we celebrate the Reformation this night. We almost had a few technical glitches before the service even began, but we got them straightened out, thanks be to God. As you notice, it's also Puppets Weekend. The puppets have been hard at work for the last month and a half um, doing videos, so they've been meeting in small groups, kind of doing videos that they bring together uh, and have still the ability to pro do proclaim God's Word through that. Uh, thanks be to God for Yvonne and for all those who still partake in that. Uh, there will be a uh, donation. They usually have their cinnamon roll Sunday would be today, this weekend. Uh, but of course, with everything going on, they weren't able to do that. If you still want to give to the puppets on your way out tonight, you can uh, drop off a donation in the offering box. Uh, note that it's for the puppets, and we'll make sure it gets to that because they're still doing their thing, and we still want to provide for them as well, uh, even despite everything going on. Um, as well as that, you'll see as well that our shoe boxes, it's the final week. If, if a lot of people have been bringing them in. We're getting close. I think we're almost to 100 right now from what's been brought in just today. Um, so bring those in. If you forgot, you can bring them in on Sunday, and we'll still even take them in the office by Wednesday uh, if you have them. So, but try to turn those in as soon as you can. Uh, we'll have that. Also, Bethlehem Walk will still be happening this year. It'll be a look a lot different than it has in years past. Um, we're requiring people to reserve uh, ahead of time to come in. So we'll have specific times blocked off. Uh, you can come in with groups, you know, people that you, you know, want to come together, you can do that. Please call us in the office and we can schedule a time uh, that will be also available here soon. You can write, uh, hopefully write and stuff, but please call us in the church office. I do believe that is December 5th, correct? December 5th, uh, that'll be that weekend there. Uh, so please call that evening and we'll, have, we'll get you a time. Uh, also, you'll see the Christmas survey. <laughs> With everything going on, we usually have eight to 900 people come for Christmas Eve service. 
um, please call us in the church office to let us know if you'll be attending in person this year so we can kind of plan accordingly uh, and plotting out that. A survey will also be going out. There's already one on our Facebook, on our, um, uh, our um, what's that called? Website. That's what I'm looking for. Website. Please go on our website. You can fill out the survey right now. Uh, that'll be also sent out to everyone in November uh, in mailing as well, but you can start filling it out right now so we can start trying to gauge uh, what Christmas is going to look like this year. Uh, thanks be to God, Jesus Christ is born. I'm sure the first Christmas was just as messy, if not more, uh, the night our Savior is born. This year will look kind of crazy, too. Uh, but we give thanks to God that his word will still go out. Tonight, it's Reformation. And we'll begin a little bit differently than we have in years past. Dale is going to be helping. We're going to have a processional in. We're going to have a gospel reading in the back. I'll have you turn and face to hear the gospel. And then I'll have you turn around so you can actually read the words up here on the thing. And then we'll process in with the opening hymn. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll walk back and we'll read the gospel. So please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may face forward as we read the responsive words together. We know that a person is not justified by works of the law. But through faith in Jesus. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus. In order to be justified by faith in Christ, and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. We continue by singing our own hymn.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray to you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with the intro. It. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. You shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue in the My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be blessed. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. And shall not be put to shame. Congregation may be seated as we continue now with the hymn of praise, hymn 849, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness.
now with our next puppet song. I'll ask at this time that the lights be lowered. Okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the scripture readings. Our first reading for the Feast of the Celebration of the Reformation comes from Revelation chapter 14. John writes, Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say Psalm 46 responsibly. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam. Though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the 
kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our epistle lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the third chapter, also our text for the sermon. Paul writes, Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation to be by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then, what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our hymn, hymn 668, to rise to arms with prayer, employ you.
stand for the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated as we continue now with our credo hymn, We All Believe in One True God. Simple enough, but it's a good concept to learn. 
Life is, after all, full of opposites. Light and dark, love and hatred, peace and war, truth and lies. So, have you ever stopped to think about what the opposite of faith is? It seems like an easy enough answer. Unbelief. Apostasy. The opposite of faith is to not have faith. But what does that look like? If this was my boy's children's book, how would we illustrate what unbelief looks like? In our epistle reading, Paul illustrates what the opposite of faith is. He writes this, What becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. On what grounds is our boasting excluded? By a law of works? No. But on the grounds of faith. The opposite of faith is boasting. Faith excludes boasting. You can't have both happening at the same time. So, the best way to celebrate and honor the Reformation, perhaps, is to keep quiet and let God do the talking. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. This is illustrated in Revelation chapter 8, when the angels break open the seals and all creation is silent for half an hour. When God reveals his word, then what can be said is nothing at all. This teaches us that perhaps we talk too much. We boast too much. Boasting reveals a lack of faith. Now, boasting comes in all formats, written and verbal. Discussions, meetings, social media, newspapers. TV, electronics, video games, bulletin boards, campaigns, slogans, political, all that good stuff. But boasting also comes in a variety of emotions and attitudes. Not surprisingly, boasting looks like pride, gossip, lies, lewd speech, bragging, and arrogance. But perhaps in a way which will surprise you, boasting can also look like anxiety. Doubt, despair, depression, all of it is a form of boasting. Because boasting is when you look at the wrong thing. Boasting spends its time looking in the wrong direction and focusing in on the wrong thing. Boasting is something you do when you look at yourself. Boasting makes us think much too much of ourselves and nothing of Christ. It's not too difficult to notice then that Faith and boasting will impact how you read God's word and decide whether or not you're a Christian. Take the law of God, for example, the Ten Commandments, right? God's will. We often think that the law of God is all about making people good, or at least about how we can become good. This is what boasting does to us. Our boasting will take God's law and it will use it to showboat our achievements. Look at me. Look what I do. That's the boast of pride. Or, our boasting will cause us to despair of ourselves and think, Woe is me! I am such a terrible sinner. In fact, I am too good of a sinner for God to be a savior. I'm too good at sinning. That's a boast of despair. Boasting always has a habit of focusing in on the self, me, Myself, I, a unholy trinity of idolatry. Boasting always looks inward, and whether it discovers good or evil, it will always talk of itself. It doesn't matter if you say in pride, look at me, or in despair, woe is me. They're both a form of boasting. It is tempting to take the law of God on my terms. As if God sits in my judgment seat, in my court, and has to go along with what we think about his holy word, to define in terms, in my terms, of how God will have to deal with me, how God should decide what he does with me. That's what boasting is. To stand over God's law as the judge, and discern what parts of it I like, what I have done, what I have not done, what we can change, what we can redefine. How many times have I heard... Well, if God is going to hold this one thing against me and deny me entrance into heaven, then that's his problem. Such is boasting of ourselves. What can be done 
with our boasting, with all of our talk, with all of our pride, with all of our despair. Well, in the midst of all this, we discover that God's word, his laws, also speak. God's law must do the job of drowning out all the voices. It must shout above everyone else to silence all. Paul reminds us by saying this. Whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, you and me, so that every mouth may be stopped, quieted, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. No, the law of God is not given to aid in our boasting. It comes merely to silence us. Treat others as you would like to be treated. You know, anyone with two brain cells together can, that can rub together can figure that out. The golden rule that every religion on the planet has discovered in plain sight. Only Christianity has the gall to say, you haven't done it. That's right. You heard me. The law of God, which is true and right and good, cannot advance you into becoming good. Not, it cannot make you righteous. In fact, it hinders you. People think that God gave us his law so that it aids them on the path to becoming good people. But God gave his law to awaken sin within us, to silence you, in fact, even to kill you, to show you how it really is. In a word, God's law, the Ten Commandments, tells us this. This is what's wrong with you and me. The law kills our boasting and silences us. We remember in our hymn, the law is but a mirror bright to bring the inbred sin to light. That the scripture puts everything Galatians tells us under sin, good, bad, beautiful, ugly, noble, wretched, all these opposites, together are put under sin. That the law, 1 Timothy 1 tells us, is given not to make us righteous, but is given to the sinner. That the law in Romans chapter 3, it charges all people to be under sin. No one is excluded. That we find out in Romans 7, when the law came, sin wakes up inside of us, and I die. We are reminded, though, in Romans chapter 3, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And Paul, as he laments in Romans 7, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? And he continues on to say this, thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, my Lord. And as he goes on in Romans 3 to say that you have been justified by his grace as a gift the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And in Romans 8, as he says, that God has done what the law could not do by sending his own Son into the likeness of our sinful flesh. And Romans 3 continues on to say, but now the righteousness of God has appeared apart from the law, the righteousness of faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. And he continues on in 1 Timothy to say this, that this is true, and this requires full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am foremost. In Galatians 3, we're reminded that the scriptures put everything under sin so that the promise of faith in Jesus Christ would be given to those of you sitting out there tonight who believe. Your grace, the hymn reminds us, dear Lord, I plead, your death is now my life in thee. The gospel awakens our faith. Faith does not look inward. That would be to boast. Faith looks to Jesus Christ alone, which merely trusts that what he has done has been done for you. The answer to all of your sin, all of the problems of the law which convicts us, makes us boast of how proudful we are or despairful we are, is not more of yourself. That's not the answer. It's not what you can say or do about it, but what God has spoken by crucifying his son so that you now live. God has treated us not as we should be treated, but as he would treat now his beloved son. God, Paul says, has put forward his own son to be received by you in faith. Faith spends its time looking in the right direction, focusing on the right thing. Faith is not something that you do. It's what happens when you finally look outside of yourself. Faith 
makes us think of Christ and nothing of ourselves, whether good or bad. This is why boasting is excluded. It's why it's the opposite. Faith drowns it out. Faith cares not for making excuses or trivializing sin, but rather faith in Christ allows God to be God and for you to be not God. It trusts in what God says about our condition. It allows the mirror to reveal our sin and allows Christ to be your Savior. So do yourself a favor as we celebrate the Reformation this year. Get yourself out of the way. Stop caring about how you can boast in yourself. Stop boasting about all the wonderful things you think you do to get good with God. Stop boasting about how you think you're such a better sinner. And God is a Savior. The Gospel says, believe this. Jesus Christ crucified for you. That what Jesus Christ has done for you, and to trust that everything is done already. Faith in Jesus Christ alone unlocks heaven. It sees that what Jesus did, he did for you. In order for faith to thrive, it must see the right thing. And here, faith is given where God puts forward his Son for you to see. Faith lets us see Jesus. And what do you see when you look at Jesus? You see a sacrifice. A sacrifice where guilt and filth are taken away. And where innocence and blessedness flood in. When you see Jesus, you see that this bloody pulp of a man dying and rising from the grave was enough to make you clean. Now, don't bother looking in on yourself to see whether you're clean enough. Continue to look to Jesus Christ in faith. Faith lets us see God's justice. Faith lets us see that evil is so tangible, real, destructive, and that God cannot ignore it, and it must be dealt with. But this is how God has dealt with your sin. You see, in times past, he overlooked sin, he never lost sight of what he needed to do, but through the centuries he worked out his plan to make sure he got it done. And on the day when God dealt with your sin, he excluded boasting. Because when God looked around, you and I were nowhere to be seen. Only one was there, Jesus the Christ, whom God has put forward for you to see as the one who takes upon your sin. And he took the punishment of our boastings of the whole world, and now he's alive forevermore and can never die again. Boasting likes to talk, but faith covers the mouth. Faith allows us to sit in the judgment seat and to hear the judge declare you innocent on behalf of one who has made propitiation, atonement, appeasement for God. God's forgiveness changes you into what we often try and do by our own efforts. Isn't this liberating? Do you no longer have to be uncertain of where you stand with God because God has declared it and done it all for you? All of our boasting will little by little drive faith away. And all we're left with when faith is driven out and boasting is brought in as a congregation, as a people, as a people of faith, all we'll be left with is our gripes, our complaints, our vain talk, our glory stories, our showboats, and our dreams, and we're boasting. But the good news is that God continues to hold out Jesus Christ, so that you can continue to gaze upon him in faith as you come to this table this night. God continues to be just, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. God continues to silence and exclude our boasting, so that we can have something much better and say, his own dear son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. That Reformation truth will abide with you always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand now as we continue with the prayers of the church. Friends in Christ, I urge you to lift up your hearts to God and to pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, 
Look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy. May your kingdom come to us and expand, bringing all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all for whom we pray this night, that you bring healing to all those who need it, comfort to those who are in sorrow, and grace to all those who are in need. Lord, we give thanks for the gift of marriage, for the gift of my parents as they celebrate 30 years of marriage, and for all those who give thanks for the life that you have given to them. Lord, in your mercy, grant us our daily bread, preserve for us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all of our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We now conclude celebrating our Reformation this year by singing our closing hymn, hymn number 584, Faith and Truth and Life Bestowing. <laughs>